O Lord, give me the tongue of the learning, that I may know what I ought to say. And if there be any word good for the use of edifying, give it, that thou mayest minister grace to the hearers. Grant that I may speak boldly. I open my mouth wide, O Lord. Do thou fill it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Behold, O God, our Defender, and look upon the face of your anointed. Our minor propers are drawing us closer into God as we progress through John's discourse on the bread of life. The further and further we go, the closer we get to God. Today we come to the very dwelling place of God. How lovely are your dwellings, O Lord God of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. We desire to enter, but stand at the door with longing in our hearts. As we look, we see the house built with seven pillars, reflecting, uh, reflecting the perfection of the inhabitant within. But I'm sure it didn't begin that way. Everything created has a beginning, and that and that the perfection of this building now reflects, and that perfection which this building now reflects wasn't always perfect. It had to become perfect through the crafting of God. Piece by piece, the columns were lovingly crafted and then placed together. During the midst of the construction, they may not have looked like what they would eventually, but the craftsman had the picture in his mind and worked to bring it to life by removing that which was not of its final form. And then finally, each pillar is finished and now the outside matches the inside, and we stand before it seeking entrance for the feast prepared within. The sacrifice has been slaughtered and prepared, and the wine mixed to perfection. The places have been laid. All that remains is for us to gain entry. But how can we, when he is perfect and we are not, how can we gain entry into perfection? We can, not because we are perfect already, but because in calling us in to join him, he will make us perfect in himself. He will provide that, that which we lack, so that when we see, sit to eat of his bread and drink of his wine, we will not be doing so unworthily, but fully ready to eat and drink. For the pillar was not perfect when it was still in its raw form. It was made perfect because God desired it for his use. It is the simple that God makes wise. It is the raw material that is made fit for use. That which naturally occurs is not perfect until it is worked over and made perfect by God. A tree is not perfect for the use of the house until it is worked over and made into something that can be made useful for a house. By itself, it is beautiful and wonderfully made by God, but it is not yet made perfect because it has not had perfection infused into it by coming into contact with perfection. Until then, it is just beautiful. The same can be said of us until we come we come into contact with God and are made perfect in Him, we are merely beautiful. We are wonderfully made with perfection in mind, but until we are worked over, we are not yet perfect. We are waiting to be perfect. We are waiting to have perfection infused into us. Perfection comes to us in the person of Christ. True, he is perfect God, the one being that has perfection merely by being. Perfection does not need to be worked into perfection. Yet, Christ was also a human being, born just like us, beautiful, but with the perfection still needing to be on earth. His perfection was revealed when he mounted the cross of his own free will, and willingly endure the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. This is when his perfection as a human became fully apparent. 
because this is when he accomplished that for which he came. Had Jesus never died for our sake, he could never have been made, he, he could have never been perfect man, even though he was perfect God. Because he did, he became perfect. There were plenty of people in Jesus' life that counseled him that he was perfect just the way he was. Just look at Peter. Jesus asked him, who do men say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter answers correctly, as we know, but when Jesus takes it one step closer toward his perfection, Peter rebukes him. Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Peter tells Jesus that his status as the Son of God is enough, that perfection is not necessary, or that he is already perfect just the way he is, perfect as God with a beautiful but perf imperfect with a beautiful but imperfect creation get behind me satan he says you are a hindrance to me for you are not setting your mind on the things of god but on the things of man for as god he knows that he has not yet reached his perfection as man and having achieved his perfection when he mounted the cross he has made it to where we are able to partake of his perfection as we work toward our perfection. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. In partaking of the body and blood of Christ, the perfect food and drink of unending life in him, we allow him to take up residence in us. Perfection cannot be attained, cannot be attained unless it has perfection infused into it by contact with the, perf with the perfect. When we eat the bread and drink the wine, we are partaking of the perfect body and blood of Christ and uniting ourselves to him and his sacrifice. We are intimately communing with, with the perfect, and that which he inhabits he must first make perfect, just like the house with the seven pillars. It takes time, because all things in time take time, but because he perfects that which he inhabits, we are eventually made perfect. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who is without sense, wisdom says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave simpleness and live, and walk in the way of insight. Eating and drinking of the body and blood of Christ are the things that allow us to enter the house of perfection. Leave the simpleness of beauty behind and enter into perfection. Beauty is indeed a sight to behold, but beauty is not perfection. Beauty fades and withers away to nothingness eventually because beauty does not have everlasting life provided by Christ, so it fades away. Perfection can only be attained when that for which it was made is achieved. For us, that perfection is when we lay simplicity and beauty aside and walk in the way of insight, which leads to fully accepting the life offered in Christ. That life looks different than the beautiful life to those outside. Forming and molding, hacking and discarding, laying aside all that is not of Christ. But when it is finally achieved and the outside finally looks like the inside filled with life, perfection is finally achieved as we receive everlasting life in Him. And then we come before that seven-pillared house again, once finally, and then we say, Behold, 
our God, our Defender, and look upon the face of the Anointed in Christ, in us, together forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.